States. Before this morning's announcement, I'd like to share some information with you that I received on the phone last night. Secretary of Defense Cap Weinberger called to inform me that hostilities in Grenada have ended and that he has instructed our military commanders to begin withdrawing their forces within a few days. What this means is that the situation is stable. No sniper fire or other form of military resistance is evident on the island. Our objectives have been achieved, and as soon as the logistics permit, American personnel will be leaving. I'd like to add that the members of the armed forces have conducted themselves in the finest tradition of the military. We can be proud of the courage and professionalism that we've seen from the people down there. The American students call them rescuers. The citizens of Grenada have hailed them as liberators. I think the whole lot of them deserve the respect and admiration of our country. The operation was not without cost. Those who were killed, wounded, or injured in this operation, I believe, are heroes of freedom. They not only rescued our own citizens, but they saved the people of Grenada from repression and laid aside a potential threat to all the people of the Caribbean. After viewing the massive horde of Soviet weapons found in that island, who knows what evil the liberation of Grenada achieved for us or averted in the years ahead. And now, on to the business at hand. I'm pleased to announce today the appointment of Donald Rumsfeld as my special representative for the Middle East. I can't think of a better individual than whom to entrust the coordination of our role in the Middle East peace process and in the Lebanon negotiations. Don Rumsfeld has had a distinguished career in public service. He's had experience in wide areas of government and public policy, including military service as a naval aviator, in the legislative branch as a member of the United States Congress, and in the executive branch, where his many appointments included Chief of Staff of the White House, Member of the Cabinet, and U.S. Secretary of Defense. I am grateful that he's agreed to take on this special assignment and that G.D. Searle, Isley and Company, where he serves as President and Chief Executive Officer, has made it possible for him to lend his talents to his country for a while. He'll be joining the team immediately, and in view of the serious job that he's undertaking, we're happy to have an individual of his stature on board so quickly. Ambassador Richard Fairbanks, who is now in Geneva, has told me that he will continue his critical involvement in these issues, and I am grateful for his dedication. We intend to work and use the talents of our best minds to achieve a just and lasting peace in the Middle East. I announced in September 1982 a realistic set of principles which we consider the best chance for a resolution of the Arab-Israeli conflict. No one's come up with a better proposal since. I'm confident that progress in Lebanon will add momentum to the serious efforts that are going on to establish this broader peace. We hope that the leaders of Lebanon, who are now meeting in Geneva, will put the problems of the past aside. They have it within their ability to move toward a national consensus. Progress in their talks could lead to the withdrawal of all foreign forces from Lebanon and the establishment of a truly representative government. We're proud, as Americans, of the part we're playing to bring peace to this troubled region. And now, Don Rumsfeld will be our point man in that effort. I've known Don over the years, and I recognize the talent and vigor that he can bring, bring to bear on these weighty problems. I hope all those who share our sincere desire for peace in the Middle East will work with our new representative. So, Don, good luck, and our hearts are with you. Mr. President, Mr. President Rodman says you intend to invade that country, do you, sir? Who says? The Nicaraguan leader, sir. I haven't believed anything they've been saying since they got in charge. Well, Mr. President, and Mr. President, you shouldn't either. Mr. President, does the, success of Grenada, as you, does the success of Grenada as you view it, that that operation mean that you might be able to apply the military in similar situations elsewhere? I'd, no, I can't foresee any situation that had exactly the same things that this one had. It had exactly what we announced in the beginning, the need to protect the lives and the safety and freedom of 
about a thousand Americans, most of them students down there in a medical school, and in answer to a request on the part of the other nations bound by treaty together in the East Caribbean, that we lend our support to them in freeing this up because they lacked the strength and capability of doing it. Somebody else asks, would you but, be willing to do it again? As I say, if all the conditions were the same, I don't see why our reason would be any different, but I don't foresee any similar situation on the horizon. Why do you want 100 nations in the United Nations not agree with you when you say that this was a worthy effort? Well, why do you want 100 nations not agree with you that this was a worthwhile venture? Helen, 100 nations in the United Nations have not agreed with us on just about everything that's come before them where we're involved. And you know, it didn't, well, it didn't upset my breakfast at all. Mr. President, uh, some people say that the U.S. has now lost the moral high ground, that there's no difference between what we did in Grenada and what the Soviets did in Afghanistan. What's your response to that? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Anyone who would link Afghanistan to this operation, and incidentally, I know your frequent use of the word invasion. This was a rescue mission. But in Afghanistan, if you will recall, when the Soviets installed their choice of head of state, for Afghanistan, and in the process in changing the forces there, an American ambassador was murdered in Afghanistan. And then against all the opposition of the Afghanistan people, they have used every vicious form of warfare, including chemical warfare, the killing of women and children that has caused even some of their own men to desert because they will not carry out the orders to carry women, to kill women and children. And they're still there after a long period of time longer than I have been in this office as compared to what we did in answer actually to an appeal that first came from the governor general of the island who was in house arrest to his fellow uh, states there in the Caribbean for appealing for rescue and we helped in the rescue. Granted that we, we contributed the bulk of the power but because, only because the others were limited in their ability to do that. And uh, this was a rescue mission. It was a successful rescue mission, and the people that have been rescued and the Grenadians that have been liberated are down there delighted with and giving every evidence of appreciation and gratitude to our men down there. Mr. Are you concerned about our allies? Are you I said thanks. Thank you. Right, we'll <laughs> we did. Well, now listen, you, you're departing from the reason for the gathering here. Don, take over. We'll let the, we'll the, of the Israeli withdrawal Thank pact with Lebanon something that uh, you think w would serve uh, any interest now? I don't Syria think seems to want it, sir. No, I don't think that that should happen. How about freezing it? Freezing it. In that climate? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. I will be very brief. The President has uh, 